How how long have you been a Star Wars fanatic? Um, ever since it came out. Ever since 1977? 77, May 22nd, yes. Well. Well. <laughs> how about that for some precision? Yeah. <laughs> so you're always, so if I threw out something like, can you name three bounty hunters in Empire Strikes Back? Could you do it? Oh, you're evil. I couldn't even remember Edward James almost. <laughs> IG-88, Bosk, Boba Fett. Um, yes. But you've always been a huge fan. And like I saw all these clips of interviews back when where you were like, I just want to be in a Star Wars movie. Some interview or some con, I want to be in a Star Wars movie. It's something like that's always been part of you since you were little. Yeah. Yeah. And, and always. 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 The force will the force will be with you. Always. Always. Yes. And always. did you audition for the Mandalorian? You didn't even audition. So did Which doesn't happen very often. No. No. Yeah. But I, I don't understand. So is it one day you're at Starbucks? And you get a call from your agent, and your agent says, "I think you're going to be in a Star Wars." Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm going to give some credit to extraordinary women, extraordinary Asian women who support, you know, their sisters. Um, I was at a party, and uh, throwback to Joy Luck Club, um, Tamlin Tamita, dear friend, amazing human being. She knew what a huge Star Wars fan I was. And at that party was Deborah Chow, who was directing Mandalorian. And she came up to me. She's like, you have to meet Deborah. You and, and she knows everybody. She's like, the, she's the social butterfly, which I'm not. Like, I don't even know how I succeed in this business. Seriously. I don't schmooze. I don't. Because you're charming know, and you're talented. I don't know anyone. No. You, you're a ch you are one of the most charming people I have ever encountered. Oh. You light up a room. Immediately light up a room. I'm not just saying that. When you are in a room, everybody gravitates towards you. You have that it. That's what it is. Okay. But go well, ahead. Go ahead. I so, didn't know that. so she introduced you. So she introduced me to Deborah. Deborah and I just started talking and we hit it off. And you know, and then she's like, Oh, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, mention you to you know how people say that and you don't never happens. believe it. Never happens. And sure enough. Yeah, that's... Do you remember the day? Do you remember the moment? Where were you when you got the call? Oh, wow. That's a good... I don't remember what happened yesterday. No. Um, <clears throat> I remember getting um, not a call. Like, it's so weird. Our managers and our agents, like they just email stuff. But I think they did call me that day. And I read the script. And at first I was a little sad and concerned because, you know, Fennec Shan dies. In the script, yes. In the script. And I was like, gosh, I've been holding off for so long. You know, what is it, like 40 years? But hang on, hang on. Your first reaction should have been like, yes, yes. I, oh yeah, totally, totally. My first reaction, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I'm reading it, I'm reading it. And I'm like, oh yes, yes. Yeah, she's an assassin. Yeah. And she gets shot in the gut and dies. It's like, oh, it just like broke my heart. So, totally so what heart. did you do? You went to set and were you, did you, did you mention it? Like, do I have to die? Did you talk to anybody? No, no. What happened was like, you know, I had a, a lengthy conversation with John Favreau and Dave Filoni, two of the most and again, they're they're in the caliber of George Clooney for me. The nicest human beings, you know, the kindest, creative, just just saints, really. Um, so I I had a long conversation with them and just loved the take that you know they were going with it. And so I I go on set. I'm like, you know what? This might be my only opportunity. I I gotta do it, right? So yeah, I did. And I go on set and the costume was amazing. And, you know, I worked on the hair idea with Maria and we were like 
really being creative about this character because I'm like, okay, if it's only going to be one episode, I'm going to make her like stand out, you know? I'm going to have this like really cool hairdo to go. It's really like, I, I really invested a lot into it. Right. And I was so excited. And, and um, the first time, like I was on the volume, not realizing what it was. And, and I got on set and literally there was like one rock and some sand. And I was just like, wow, this is like, you know, it's like, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> back in the day, the black box theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where, 99 seater where you had like one man three boxes show that yeah. turns into a table that yeah. turns into a chair that turns into your house you know <laughs> there was just nothing there but you, there you of course there's going to be a world in post well i didn't know you know i was just like wow well, okay not very impressive <laughs> <laughs> did you say anything to anybody like is no, this, well, is no, this it's really just, it? these are my inner nerd thoughts <laughs> <laughs> and then they light it up and it was this, it was Tatooine with the binary sunset. And I freaked. I mean, literally, I teared up. I teared up so much. I was so overwhelmed with emotions. And then I for asked the first AD, Kim Richards, who was this incredible human being. I'm like, okay, I know we're not supposed to take pictures on set, but you have to, you have to take this picture of me looking at the binary sunset with my one foot up like Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> 